Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for Honey Bee Stamps. Today we are using the Gnome Place Like Home set. Um, gnomes are it right now, y'all. They are so adorable and they are everywhere. I'm also going to be using um, the Silent Night stamp set and then the Jingle All the Way Stamps and Dies. So, it's been a hot minute since I have done a scene card. I knew that's what I wanted to do with this. Um, here, I'm just basically I have all my masks cut out for all the pieces parts I want to put on there um, since I'm doing a one layer scene I'm gonna have to cut the masks anyway so for me it's super helpful to cut them out first so that way I can use them to like just get my scene together they're super easy to move around uh, so if you're new to scene cards try that try cutting out your masks first so that way you can lay everything out and make sure that it fits because originally once I did this, I was going to use the Let It Snow sentiment, and I could not make it, well, I could make it fit, but I couldn't make it balanced. Um, like, the design just wasn't balanced with the way that sentiment was drawn. So I ended up changing it and switching it out to the Jingle All The Way um, sentiment, which both still work for the purpose that I need them to work for, so it's fine, but it just didn't look right. Like, it looked super left-hand heavy. But I wanted, like the way it's drawn, I wanted it to be on the right-hand side, but I didn't have room for the right-hand side. So, anywho. So then, they're also really helpful for placement. Um, so with all of my masks in place, I just lay my stamps um, right over the mask so I know exactly where it will stamp. Uh, this does only work in a stamp position, or I prefer the Misty, but it will work with anything that you've got. Or, if you're old school, stamp on the jig will also work. You'll notice as we're doing the first part of the filming, there's like a blurry spot in the center of the camera. Uh, I apologize for that. That is Peanut's handiwork. Um, he was making cards uh, when Thursday, Thursday he was making cards and uh, he wanted to film and all of that stuff. So because he likes to touch the camera and the zooming and the in and out, he, he got little fingerprints on the actual lens of the camera. I don't really look at the camera when I'm filming, I'm more paying attention to what I'm doing as far as card making. Um, so I didn't notice it until later on. So I will clean off the lens eventually and that blurry spot will go away, but it does take me a hot minute to realize that it's there. So I got all my gnome stamped down. When you're doing a one layer card, you stamp whatever you want to see all of first. So whatever's in the front, like my little gnome girl, she's in the very front. She got stamped first, then I stamped the other two gnomes. Um, behind her, masked them off, and then I will stamp the presents, um, and then the ornaments. And that is one of the things, uh, you know, we talked about the the placement, using the masks for placement. The ornaments will actually be super helpful to place on the tree mask, so I can see where they will be before I stamp them. Otherwise, I would just be stamping them willy-nilly and then hope that they made their way onto the tree in a place that made sense. Uh, but because of the stamp positioner, um, I can actually figure out where exactly they will be going right over my mask. So that's super nice. So I did say all things gnomes are everywhere. They are. Gnomes are the trend right now. Um, and in card making, there's always, just like in home decor, um, you know, there's always trends um, here. Like they just, like gnomes are gnomes are it and I think that they're adorable. I would never have thought to use them for Christmas um, but I do think that they are super cute. I actually when I was I had the idea for this card I had pulled these stamps out. They've been sitting in the corner of my desk for a couple of weeks now um, with my intention to use them. Just you know side eye side eyeing me just eyeballing me up like why aren't you using us? Um, and so my friend Michelle actually does like a Christmas challenge thing uh, where she works with other card makers and they pick a different challenge and so the challenge that we did since I got to pick it was um, non-traditional Christmas colors because y'all know I feel like red and green is straight Christmas and I cannot help it. Um, so I picked non-traditional Christmas colors and I know I used green um, but really honestly what else color was I supposed to make that tree, right? Uh, I tried to use non other colors, some blue violets, some blues, some violets, some pinks, um, and still make it feel very uh, Christmassy, very holiday-like uh, without the traditional red and green, but I had to use some green. I don't feel bad about it. 
Um, so just moving through here, stamping out those ornaments, masking them as I go, because once they are stamped and masked, I will be able to stamp my tree over top of them and the ornaments will still be in the front. Um, so yeah, that's that. I was talking to Eric before I, like while I was editing my video and he's like, what story are you going to tell? And I was like, I, I have no idea. I'm like, I'm out. I got a lot of things going on, um, but some of them I'm not ready to share yet. Uh, so he suggested that I tell some stories from vacation that I have not told yet. So right now that's the game plan. Before I get into that, I do just quickly want to ask a favor from you. Uh, I have a friend um, named Lisa, and I'm not going to go into her thing because it's her personal business, but if you are the praying uh, type, uh, the, her family could certainly use it. Um, they're just kind of in a spot right now and going through some really, really hard things. And um, I love her so much. And I um, I just, I, I cannot even imagine the things that she's dealing with. And she's so strong and amazing and, and dealing with those things so gracefully. But she could definitely, uh, she could definitely use some prayers. So if you could include her in yours, I would greatly appreciate that. And um, so here on to the scene, I told you I wanted to make it a scene. I just used a, you can see me getting frustrated because I can't pick up anything. My nails are getting too long. It's about time to trim them down. Um, speaking of nails, is this nail polish color not just totally adorable? Normally I don't like blues uh, on my nails. I know blue is my boyfriend, but blue and my nails just doesn't look great. I can do a navy though. And um, this is a navy. This is Ryan by Zoya, which I had never used before, but it was gifted to me for my birthday. And then the, the glitter top coat that's on top is called Dream, and it's amazing. This stuff covers so good, y'all. Um, yeah, so anywho, um, I just sketched out a little hill on some masking tape. Uh, this is the post-it note one. And I'm just using that to create a little hill in the background here. I'm using the my traditional go-to night scene uh, colors because I want the snow that I plan on stamping to show up really, really well. So that's how I ended up with this. It does. It certainly doesn't have to be a night scene, but I wanted that snow to like pop. Um, so vacation stories that I have not told. So as you know, if you've listened to my channel, that we went on vacation. Me, uh, Peanut, Eric, and my sister, we went to Carolina Beach, drove down there and back. And then um, before I was trying to, I was like, I can't remember if I've told this story or not. I feel like I touched on vacation. Um, so if I did tell this story, then please, um, please forgive me. And you're going to have to listen to it again. So my apologies. Um, so in the process of packing uh, to go on vacation, I had packed all of Peanut's stuff. I had packed all, uh, I was in the process of packing all my stuff and I had done some laundry and Peanut asked me if he could pack some uh, things into his suitcase. And I was like, yeah, that's totally fine. Like, you know, just put in there, you know, whatever it is that you want to wear or whatever. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So then we pack up the truck, leave everything else. So it's, uh, we stopped halfway down. I did not give him a bath that night. Um, it just really was not worth it, uh, in the hotel to get out all of his bath things and, and everything else. So I did not give him a bath that night. So the first day that we got down there, we got down there at about, I don't know, like one o'clock ish. I want to say, I feel like it was around one. Um, might've been a, a little bit later than that. Here I use that same hill and just what was ever left over on my ink blending to create a hill in the, a, a secondary hill in the background. You'll notice with the Copic coloring, it's actually all two color blends. Um, so normally I do very detailed coloring, which I totally love. Um, but when you have a scene that has this many elements in it, you don't necessarily need it. And I really wanted to show you that. I know a lot of people who watch my channel are beginner um, when it comes to Copic coloring. You can get dimension and um, good shading with just two colors. Uh, so that's what I'm, I'm doing here. I will tell you that doing the, the Copic coloring with only two colors, sometimes you got to work a little harder to make them blend. Um, but that's okay. Don't pick colors that are too close to each other. So like I'm used to G05 and then I'm shading with a G28. 
these are levels and levels away from each other. But if I didn't use a darker green, if I went with like a G05 and a G07, it would have no dimension. It would be super flat. So that's one of the things with picking the colors you have to pay attention to is you need them to be fairly far apart or they're not going to give you any shading at all. It'll just look like flat color and then you'll be disappointed. Um, I am going to go back over, you know, do my lightest color because it gives a good um, set, like if it's saturated and it's wet, uh, it allows the other color to blend a little bit better. Then I'll take my lightest color, go back over my darkest to blend that out. This isn't going to be completely smooth, but it's a tree. It's not supposed to be, so I'm not worried about that. As far as the other blending on the gnomes and on the gifts, um, those ones were a little bit closer together. Um, not as far apart as like the tree, but like I used a V04 and a V06. Um, I tested it out beforehand to make sure they were far enough apart. Same thing with the BV02 and the BV04. I used an RV04 and an RV09. Um, so just try them out beforehand before you get to work on your project. The C1 and the C3 are far enough apart for the grays. That's no issue. Um, but anywho, so back to this vacation thing. So we got there around like one o'clock, I think. One or three. It was in the early-ish afternoon and we decided we were going to go to the beach and then we were going to go to the pool. And um, so we did that. Peanut and I went over to the pool and then um, it was like around, we were getting ready to go back in and eat. Uh, my sister and I were sitting there, you know, having conversation and Eric volunteered to take Nathan back, um, get him into the shower and get him dressed. So he does that. Um, and Michelle and I are sitting there, you know, chatting at beachside or whatever, blah, blah, blah. We decide we're done. We're going to, um, <laughs> we're going to come back into the uh, little condo that we have rented. And as we're walking in the door, I hear Eric say, it's called going commando. It's no big deal. And I'm like, what is going on here? So I walk in there and he was like, yeah, so heads up. Your kid did not pack any underwear. And I was like, no, he did because I packed it. And he was like, no, I'm telling you, there's no drawers in there. There's there's none in there. Um, so I'm like, what? So he's like, yeah, pretty much it's just pajamas. That's all that's in the suitcase, Kelly. Just, just pajamas. So I look and sure enough that's really all that is in there is pajamas and socks um so while i told my child he could pack his like put some extra shirts or whatever in there he decided that he was going to take out what mommy put in there to make room for what he wanted in there which was really just jams so i needed to take a shower um and i was like okay like i'm just gonna i'll hop in the shower and then take him to go get clothes and underwear and he was like well i'll just take him while you shower because you still have to make like i was making dinner so he ended up taking him to just like walmart or whatever was around there and picking out some drawers and um some summer clothes since we didn't have any <laughs> since we didn't have any and uh, it was ended up being fine and he was very sweet to take him um to do that uh so yeah that's that's vacation story number one i left I let my child travel, whatever, three, four states away with no clean drawers and only pajamas. That was a thing in our life. So now, obviously, I know better. I will have to make sure that I double check his <laughs> suitcase before we go anywhere ever because he cannot be trusted. Uh, then, this was like the second or third night. Um, we had dinner at home. It's just cheaper that way. Uh, even though I don't necessarily love cooking on vacation, it is much, much cheaper, especially when you're going to be there for a week and you're staying at a place that has a kitchen. Um, it's just cheaper to, to cook in. So that's what we did mostly. We, we did go out. Um, we decided we were going to go out and get ice cream. So we're walking down the street, uh, like on the shoulder of the street, and um, we had looked for an ice cream place, and so I had the GPS on my phone. And we're um, just going down the street um, and I am walking in front with Nathan on my left hand side. So the traffic is to my right. Nathan's on my left. And 
so then Eric is walking with Michelle and he makes her like switch spots. And so I was teasing him because he always does the same thing with me as well. When we're walking down the street, he wants to be on the outside tour of traffic. And he's like, that's just, you know, that's just what you're supposed to do. Like you, you should be, I should be the one exposed to traffic, not you. And so I was, you know, teasing him about Chivalry is not dead and, and all of that stuff. And so we're walking and walking and walking. And um, at some point I realize that like the GPS, like it's not, it's not working. Like it says we're getting farther away from it. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. What is wrong with this GPS? Like, is it a bad signal? Is it whatever? Blah, 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 blah. So we had walked for probably like a good 15 minutes before I just realized that we were walking in the wrong direction. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so that took me a minute to realize. I'm not proud of it, uh, but that was what it was. And so we just, we, we obviously have to turn around. So now I do the same thing. Peanut and I are in front. Now he's on my right hand side away from traffic and Michelle and Eric are behind us and she's on his right hand side away from traffic. And we're like chatting as we're walking and just, you know, la 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 la. And then all of a sudden I hear this huge like boom and I turn back and I'm like, what was that? And Eric is like, that was that car hitting me. No joke, folks. He totally got hit by a car. Um, The woman, I don't know if she was texting or what, but she came over the white line into the shoulder and actually her side mirror hit him. It like grazed his side and then hit the back of his arm, Um, which thank God, like it wasn't an inch lower because she would have totally shattered his elbow. So she hits him and then she stops, um, I don't know, maybe like a hundred feet up and she, she just stops in traffic, doesn't even get out of her car, rolls down her window. And she was like, what was that? Now this girl's mirror is busted. It's like hanging off the side of her car. And Eric's like, that was you hitting me with your car. And she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even see you there. I'm so sorry. And like, she was a pizza delivery person. She had the little sign on top of her car or whatever. And I was like, what do you want to do? And Eric was just like, just go to like, I'm not, I'm not in, injured or whatever. He was like, I mean, it hurts, but not anything that's crazy and like sent her on her way. So I, st- I mean, I don't, we probably should have called, you know, and reported it um, because she was probably on her phone or doing something she wasn't supposed to be doing. But Eric told me later, he's like, I was trying to keep myself in check from not just losing my mind because obviously peanut is standing there on the side of the road as well. Um, so thankfully he was okay. Uh, there was, <laughs> there wasn't any real damage. And actually like he barely even had a bruise the next day, which is shocking to me considering, you know, he got hit by a car. Um, so we thought for sure that, that there would be, you know, this gigantic black and blue mark, but, but there wasn't, he was a little bit sore, but, but that's about it. But it was funny. Um, like funny, ironic, not like funny, haha getting hit by a car is not funny um but that like we had just been talking about how he insists on walking on the outside edge and um that you know chivalry isn't dead and all that because had my sister been on the outside um eric's about five ten ish my sister is four foot eleven so like that would have been her like shoulder like height for as short as she is. Um, so it could have, it could have clearly been much, much worse. And I'm, I'm very grateful that he wasn't, uh, more injured. But then, so we, I was like, what do you want to do? And he's like, well, I'm not going to get hit by a car and not get ice cream. So we continued on to the ice cream place. Um, which actually we found like a ice cream slash shake shop thing that was before the one that, uh, Google had told us about, so we ended up going there and they, it really was very, very good ice cream. So I asked him, I said, was it worth getting, was your strawberry shake worth getting a hit by a car over? And he said it was pretty good. Um, he doesn't know if he'd do it again, but it was pretty delicious. So there's that. Um, so what do we got? We, we had no clothes. We, we got hit by a car. Um, I'm trying to think if there was any other, we only really had one day that was any kind of rainy, which was nice. Um, and they have like the boardwalk, uh, that you can walk down and it's got like a bunch of fair, um, rides and stuff. But I learned my lesson this, that last summer about riding any rides with peanut, you know, you remember the 
boat thing. Never doing that again. Um, and I think Peanut also learned his lesson. Uh, we went down there for the fireworks the one night, which were super cool. I guess they do fireworks like every Thursday. So that was nice. And then um, we were going to go play putt-putt, but then we ended up... What did we do? We ended up doing something else. I think hitting the shops. Um, and then Nath there was something else Nathan wanted to do. I don't remember what it was. Um, but so that was fun. But yeah, so that was, the, I think those were the only two vacation stories that I did not share with you, was him getting hit by a car, um, which was just crazy. I mean, just wild. I, like, I don't know about you guys, but like, I clearly, like, just because of the job I've had, I've had, you know, pedestrians or bicyclists or whatever be struck by vehicles. It's not a totally uncommon thing in my life. Um, in fact, when I was young, um, my neighbor, who is still one of my best friends, we were the same age, um, she was right, like, our driveways all had hills, um, but really, some of them, most of them were only, like, slight inclines, but Amy, um, there was the one right across the street from me, and, um, it's a very large hill. Well, Amy wrote, was riding bikes with my sister, and I was out there, but I was, like, in the driveway, and... Amy came down this hill on her, um, her, what, what do they call them? Big wheels? Yeah, big wheels. That's what they were called back then. And she just hit, like, right out into the street down this hill and was hit by a car. And then, like, one of the neighbors came running in the house and they thought it was me. So they're yelling to my mother, like, just come running up in our house. Kelly just got hit by a car. And so Amy's mom was actually at my house so my mom and her mom are like shoving their way down the hallway to get out the door because they think I've just been hit by a car and in all reality when they got outside it was actually Amy. So she was just barely clipped by the back bumper of the car and to be honest like I was too young to even really know what was happening um, but I think Amy probably hit the car. Like not that the car hit her, Amy probably rode right into the side of the car. Um, and she... But she was mostly fine. Like, they still did take her, you know, to the hospital, but there wasn't any permanent injury or anything like that. Thank God. Um, but I did not have that, though I am hyper paranoid about it as a parent. I think I cannot believe that I would be the only one. I'm just, like, constantly, uh, especially, like, with the walking home from school, because um, there's just so many vehicles and everybody moving and, and everybody wanting to get out of there, they're not wait their turn in line, go around cars, everything else. I'm just super paranoid about it. So, anywho, back to the card. I outlined everything, and then I'm going to go in and add some details with my white gel pen, like I do. I added um, a little bit of garland to the tree. I added some uh, polka dots to the little girl's hat and some stripes um, to the green hat, the one that's a, a solid color, and then um, just a couple of little things to the presents. I'm going to make sure that this Distress Ink is completely dry because I'm going to be doing some heat embossing. So I heated it with my heat gun for quite some time, and now I'm just testing it with some embossing powder to make sure nothing's sticking where I don't want it. I'm going to stamp my sentiment um, which is this jingle all the way. I really wanted to do the snow in the background. Um, I am just rubbing the, this, uh, anti-static bag all over the place. Um, and I'm going to stamp this in clear embossing ink. So, uh, I really wanted to do the snow. I thought it would be super cute and just another little element, but I was very, very nervous because I was doing a white heat embossed sentiment that if I put the snow over the sentiment, um, that you would not be able to read it. It would be completely illegible. So I am going to put on the, um, the white embossing powder. I could, don't know why I couldn't think of that word. I'm going to put on the white embossing powder and I'm going to clean that up with a paintbrush just anywhere that it's stuck that I didn't want it to. And then I'm going to heat set this. But after I heat set it, um, I am going to actually use the companion dies to cut it out. Uh, so this does make it not a complete one layer card, um, but my thought process was I could take the sentiment out and then that leaves me just this background here to stamp the snow on. Um, and this snow is included in the uh, Silent Night set. 
so it's kind of like the drifty little snow so I, I i do have it about i don't know maybe a half a half an inch down the page because i'm going to stamp it one way and then flip it around and stamp it the other way so that it comes just a little bit further down the background and then that way the the sentiment is clean because it's not part of this uh, I did have a little bit of embossing powder stick where I didn't want it to, and I think that's where the tape was, um, which got me the last time, if you remember. So I just really need to start remembering to go over that area with my um, adhesive eraser. So that's stamped twice now in just clear ink. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before, uh, the white embossing powder, and just coat this. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit more flowy, like all down the... Um, the background like the snow was falling all down the background so after I get to get done uh, heat setting all of this and you can see it starting to melt there I'm gonna go back in with my white gel pen um, so that I can fill in some of those gaps all along the top and then I'm also going to extend it down the bottom uh, I varied my circles some of them are larger some of them are smaller um, just so that it would kind of blend in with what was already there. Uh, I think it came out super cute. And then the the sentiment, cutting out the sentiment, totally served my purpose for sure. Because uh, you can still totally read what it says. So I'm just going to put this panel down, just glue that down flat onto a card base. Um, I could have done a darker blue so like you wouldn't be able to see the white. But it didn't really bother me any um, to be able to see the white from the side. And then I'm going to cover the uh, sentiment in just a, a ridiculous amount of foam tape because it has all these like little parts that stick out. Um, I had to do some smaller pieces, but I wanted it to be really stable. This little piece gave me a little bit of trouble, kind of tricky, tricky there. Uh, it kept wanting to come off of my finger. And then um, I'm going to put this down. I got a little bit to the left, so I kind of had to pick it up a little bit so that it was sitting where it should be, um, but ultimately it got where it was supposed to go. You can still read it, and it doesn't look weird. I'm going to put some glitter on just pretty much all, all of my things, um, so on the gnomes, on the ornaments, all of that, because I love the glitter, and then uh, on the presents as well. And then that's it. That's the, the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope to see you again soon, and I will catch you on the next video.